few questions, okay? I mean, you've been in this sector for a long time, mm -hmm. okay? Now, um, you know, we've been in discussions, we've been engaging with each other, with GSMA and Border Global. Now, um, working with MNOs, you know, um, what do you see the, the advantages, okay, and a, a potential, uh, you know, collabor co collaborative activities mm -hmm. uh, there could be for startups that you are actually looking after, mm -hmm. working with the, uh, you know, advanced MNOs uh, around the region? Right. The MNOs are actually personally, uh, MNO is not the right term, mm -hmm. actually a connectivity provider. Yeah. Uh, now the every startup, every new technology, especially in the fourth industrial new revolution yep. areas, the startup, they need fundamental connectivity. Mm -hmm. So that's why the MNO is always necessary, you know, supporter or stakeholder in our startup area. Okay. And especially without the MNOs open collaboration or some, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the proof of concept kind of, the, you know, some pilot program, mm -hmm. our initial concept of startup cannot deploy, right. cannot prove in you know, a real society. Okay. So yeah. this is a very important partner, I mean, all, uh, for the startup, no matter what area or okay. what state. Great, great, great. Then, I mean, obviously, I mean, um, I've met a few startups and they're very, very keen to work with MNOs, mm -hmm. but um, uh, consistently they mention, oh, it's really difficult to work with MNOs. Right, okay. Right. So, can, can you just lay out, you know, what are the few challenges that mm -hmm. they face, okay, and what could MNOs do to address those challenges? I think that's the velocity problem. Mm -hmm. The MNO is a huge organization, institution, and uh, their speed about adaptation of the new technology and the new area yeah. is quite a slower than startups and new initiative. Right. The startup every month, every day, they create a new idea, yeah. a new some kind of solution. But the MNO like a big company is not the following the speed. So that's the one of the hurdle. And uh, they're So you're calling the MNO is dinosaurs? It's bigger than the uh, okay, yeah, the yeah, okay. That's why the, yeah. their fundamental yeah. functionality. Yeah. yeah, that's the most difficult yeah. as a startup working with them and all. Mm -hmm. So I want uh, they are a little more faster and uh, open Openness. their you know the adaptation from the startup technology. H how can they do that though? Uh, it's in their DNA to be dinosaurs, mm -hmm. right? I think uh, today so many people talk about the you know connectivity and the convergence. Yeah. This is kind of 30 years ago, yeah. the same story, but now it's not the convergence from, from to where. It's not the matter, I think, because of the MNO think that they converge to us. But right now, I think the time is changing and uh, I think the converging each other. So we call this a digital exchange. So I think the MNO should change in their concept not the converging to the MNO, but they have to converge in each other, then I think it's more expedite, faster, their adaptation. So you're actually looking maybe two, one or two steps ahead. I mean, digital transformation, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an old word. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're alluding to past digital transformation, digital exchange. Yes. Yeah? I think the, the new startup, they are looking for some digital exchange. Yeah. No matter what the domestic or globally or borderline, cross border, it doesn't matter. Digital can be exchange different country or different industry. This is what it called convergence yeah. for 30 years ago. Yeah, right, right, right. Now, I mean, okay, let's talk about digital exchange, mm -hmm. okay? So what are the areas? I mean, you have many startups, mm -hmm. okay? And of course, many MNOs that really want to create new revenue streams, mm -hmm. business models and so mm -hmm. forth, okay? So what, which areas, which, which sectors do you see could benefit Mm -hmm. from this digital exchange between innovative mm -hmm. uh, startups mm -hmm. and leading and open non dinosaur like MNOs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, it's uh, many items, I can say that, yeah. but especially, for example, like education, MNO, traditional MNO is, is not our business model. Yeah. Our business is uh, setting up the infrastructure mm -hmm. and uh, uh, providing the connectivity, that's all. Mm -hmm. but, now, from now on, because of the COVID-19 mm -hmm. period, every education system can be transferred to the digital area and uh, they can communicate yeah. between teacher and student through the digital era. Yeah. So this is, uh, I think, maybe MNO take care like uh, their business area 
and especially you know, typical university or school system is a kind of the changing. Yeah. Yeah. So so many people learn through the YouTube, through the you know other digital era. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the most uh, one of the example. And uh, healthcare is not the only medical areas you know industry, mm -hmm. but I mean, you know, can take care of digital health care, right. health tech area, okay. with the kind of you know, so many devices. Right, right. And uh, MNO has, I think, the power, and they have infrastructure. Right. And they have, if they're willing to join that. You can. should refer to them as connectivity providers, right? right. Not MNOs. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, I mean, and my last question, I mean, uh, my understanding is that uh, Border Global, okay, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, plays a, a key role mm -hmm. in creating the platform for you know, really innovative startups from around the world. Okay, mm -hmm. despite you know which which country or which region they may come from. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the digital world, there's no boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, you know, what can you uh, uh, tell me about the the services uh, you can offer through collaboration? with other really innovative startups mm -hmm. from around the world because i think that's that's what re you really want to do right right yeah please because uh born to global is like a public accelerator mm -hmm. under the korea government but even though the, we try to reach out the global startup and the global startup individual startup has their own identity mm -hmm. and own technology mm -hmm. and their own capability yeah but this too much to stick into the domestic area mm -hmm. but the, for example one of the startup can be out like a developing country. Yep. So they binding the developing country's situation, condition. So our goal is to uh, open the market and exchange the startup to startup. Collaboration between startup to startup, no matter what the develop, uh, developing country. And then they create a new market and uh, go forward to the global area. So I always welcome, no matter what country background, if they have uh, some creative idea and a new solution, let us know, we'll help and exchange their idea into the other countries, you know, new ideas, people. And so, I, I, what I what I got, got from that is that uh, your approach in working with startups, mm -hmm. whether they be from fast growing countries mm -hmm. or from leading advanced countries right. and, and so forth, are you, um, it's, uh, the startups, uh, you will accommodate and work with startups, mm -hmm. okay, on a technology agnostic basis, whether it be 5G, 3G, 2G, whatever, right? Why? Okay, sure, sure, sure. It doesn't matter, actually. Okay. Yeah. Because we have a capability right, right. to fit up their customer demand. Sure. It, it, it can be not necessarily 5G. Sure. Sometimes it's a 3G, sometimes it's a 4G. Yeah. But startup is kind of the denim butter. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. You're right. And my last thing, I'm, and, and this is what I really want to, I'm, obviously you're an accelerator, and there are many accelerators mm -hmm. around the world, mm -hmm. okay? Run by governments, the private sector, and so forth, okay? Now, startups can contact you directly mm -hmm. and work with you, mm -hmm. but what about with other accelerators? Because I think that's a lot more important, I think. Uh, for the other private sector accelerator, we tried to show in some guideline example mm -hmm. what's the global collaboration. Mm -hmm to the accelerator. Accelerator yeah. is domestic business. Yeah. They typically binding in the domestic yeah. area, mm -hmm. but uh, with the limited market size of domestic, they, they can uh, promote it, yeah. cultivating the startup as much as bigger. Right. So that's why we leading private sector accelerator, how the, with the domestic business, how the globalization sure. between the country by country. Okay, yeah. you want to take them beyond the borders, right? Right. Okay, okay. fantastic, fantastic, thank fantastic. Well, John Kai, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank okay. you. Thank Please you. enjoy our mobile 360 APAC in Singapore, and I look forward to further collaboration with Jess May. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.